And so I'd like to spend just a few minutes offering some initial impressions of why this particular impact of I House is so significant and enduring and why it has the potential to be even more so if we can coalesce more deeply around our vision of being both a global residential center and an intentional learning community that goes hand in hand with our mission of fostering intercultural respect and understanding, lifelong friendships, and leadership skills for the promotion of a more tolerant and peaceful world. So that's the focus tonight, and we're gonna go right into it. I believe that when one climbs these brick steps in our front entryway, which incidentally are going to be completely renovated and remodeled between December 2012 and February 2013, and that's to the diligent attention of our house committee, one immediately catches what I will call a social virus. And this, thankfully, is not a dreaded germ or a, or a lethal virus that may cause harm or sickness or impairment, but rather it's a most positive social virus that is something akin to the high that one gets from good interactions with others in actual or virtual social environments like this one tonight. More than anything, however, I hope that you will realize that this social virus is indeed highly contagious and that it is easily spread from person to person when you or they recognize how powerful and meaningful it can actually be. So tonight, look to your left, look to your right. You may indeed catch the social virus from your companions tonight. So let's call the social virus the international bug. And this is broadly construed as the sense of belonging to something greater than one's own national or local community. This bug is an awareness of the larger world around us. It means that we have a sense of what is happening outside of our own daily realities. And it signifies that we are open to the strangers around us and we respect both their differences and their commonalities with us. Let's admit it. For many of us, catching the international bug eventually means that we must regularly get on a plane to somewhere else where we, where we can truly experience a different culture and live our lives differently than we do here in the San Francisco Bay Area. But what does it mean for your life when you truly catch the international bug? I believe that catching the international bug does have a remarkable impact on one's life that shapes decisions, lifestyle choices, and future endeavors. Those who have the bug are more likely to engage in international service projects, dine with others of different backgrounds, learn different languages, invite others with different belief systems into their homes, and actually reside in other lands for extended periods. But what does it mean for our society when more people catch the international bug? It means that people are less suspicious of the motives of others. They're willing to listen to others' ideas and approaches and consider alternative ways of dealing with vexing problems. Perhaps more than anything, it means that we practice a spirit of hospitality and inclusiveness in our undertakings and in our initiatives and that we have friends and associates from many different walks of life and we, these friends have different belief systems and national backgrounds. But the next question, of course, is one that really gels with our purpose tonight. And that is, how does this catching of the international bug play out in the confines of I House? I believe that it means that national identifiers and individual ethnicities are less and less important in how we look at the others around us. 
Indeed, I recently learned that it was said at this very lectern by a former I House resident and Cal Dean following 9-11-2001 that when he looks at the world now, he doesn't see national boundaries or politically imposed geographical divisions. Rather, he just sees the places where his friends live around the world. And isn't that a wonderful way of viewing the world? There's indeed something quite marvelous about viewing the world as a virtually endless stretch of places to couch surf. And after residing in I House for a semester or two or three or four or five or eight or 15 semesters, you can find a friend to visit and mooch off of virtually any place in the world. And ultimately, that means our world becomes increasingly borderless. So what's the true impact of I House on those who are part of its orbit? The main impact of catching this international bug is a lifetime multi-cultural orientation. I almost wanted to say that it is a lifetime affliction, but as you know, that carries somewhat of a negative connotation. And what I mean to convey is that this is a virus that has an overwhelmingly positive impact on one's mindset. It means one is open to new people and cultural tendencies throughout one's day on this earth, and this openness often leads to personal self-discovery and fulfillment. So that leads us right back to the matter of the contagion effect, and that is, how does one actually catch the international bug? And I would say it's just like any other virus. It is a matter of exposure. I have found that the earlier in life that one catches this bug, the greater its impact will be because it has more time to germinate in one's heart and in one's soul and in one's mind. And of course, during one's high school and college days, one has more free time and opportunity to soak in other cultures and visit other places. But I've also found that it is never, ever too late to embrace the international bug and see where it will take you in life. Clearly, the significant others in one's life are key to the germination of the international bug. And in my own life, my wife Susan, who's down here on table number two, she's been uh, highly instrumental in encouraging this development. I could say that after my own study abroad experience in Europe some 35 years ago, I had a strong leaning toward an international lifestyle, but I let this desire go dormant for nearly a decade while I enjoyed the California lifestyle in places like Newport Beach and Kirkwood and spending time involved in physical activities like running and cycling and cross-country skiing and swimming. It would, but it was largely through the encouragement and support of Susan that our family was able to embark on two very protracted and interesting international sojourns in both Germany and Greece that enabled our families international horizons to expand exponentially. So without Susan's adventurous and willing spirit, these international odysseys likely wouldn't have happened, and I very certainly would not be standing here as executive director of iHouse if they hadn't taken place. So, sweetheart, I thank you for your open and willing spirit. But I have to admit, especially in front of my mother-in-law, Joyce Reed, that many of our family, friends, and relatives were somewhat shocked that at two different life phases, we would be willing to pull up our family lock, stock, and barrel and leave some very comfortable circumstances and move abroad to ones that weren't always so comfortable or nurturing. Yet I've found that in every international experience that our family has had, the gains always vastly exceed the pains. And despite some difficulties and challenges along the way, uh, that was the story of our family. And I'm sure that many of you here this evening also have had similar feelings after your own 
international odysseys. While there were perhaps some hardships one had to endure, the life-shaping influence of these experiences is something that is very hard to quantify. Indeed, one might say that these international exposures have been quite invaluable. But the great thing about iHouse's existence right here and right now this evening is that one doesn't have to leave the USA to have a deeply profound international experience. One can revel in the benefits of this international atmosphere found in this place and recognize that it is a true model of intercultural cooperation and encouragement. So as a group, let's do all that we can to sustain, promote, and envision where this exposure will lead our residents as their lives and their careers progress. So we come to the final question of the evening, and that is how can we as a group most effectively sustain, promote, and encourage the broader dissemination of this international bug to our various groups of friends, colleagues, and associates. Here at iHouse, we believe that the best way for you to realize this goal with us is to work and join us in helping more students from all around the world come here for an amazing, life-changing residential experience. The way that this transpires is through the funding of room and board scholarships for students who couldn't otherwise afford to live in this magnificent facility. So I want to offer a special thanks this evening for all of you here tonight who have already made such generous contributions to our scholarship fund for needy students from around the world who want to live here. And I want to encourage those of you who are still on the fence as to your ability to contribute to our scholarship effort to think about what you can do to give a further opening of iHouse's doors to a residential student body that is ever more diverse and talented. So I believe that's our mission as we move forward. It's a, a strong mission that has many different points of connection. And as I've observed tonight, I see you connecting wonderfully, and I thank you for that spirit of cooperation and support. So I say thank you to you all. <laughs>